So, two key takeaway uh, points at this stage of the election campaign. The first one is that this stage we have the Socialists and Democrats slightly ahead of EPP. Um, I say slightly ahead for, for good reason, because we're quite a long way out. The campaign hasn't started yet, and the EU election polls in some of these member states um, are quite... We don't know what's going to happen between now and the elections, and particularly in some of the big member states. For example, in France, um, the socialists seem to be doing okay in the European election poll. They might do very badly come the election. And so uh, we're a little hesitant at this stage to say, for sure, socialists are going to win. But as, it, as they're standing right now in the polls... Um, it looks like socialists are slightly ahead of the EPP, and in our prediction model, socialists are slightly ahead of the EPP. That's the first big thing. The second key take-home is a significant increase in seats for anti-European protest parties on the right and on the left. Um, we have a lot of new parties standing in these elections who currently, right now, we put in the non-attached group. So we have uh, currently 92 MEPs from these non-attached parties. For example, the Five Star Movement in Italy. We don't know where they're going to sit. They could win 18 seats. Uh, we don't know where ANO, the Czech uh, Populist Party, is going to sit. There's been a lot of discussion about a new group formed by Le Pen, Wilders and Allies. Currently, right now, we have all of those parties sitting as non-attached. If they form a group... With our numbers right now, they would have about 37 MEPs from six member states. You need 25 MEPs from seven member states. So they're very close. They're easily going to get enough MEPs, but they need to have enough member states. My guess right now is that there's going to be four political forces to the right of the EPP in the new parliament. So you're going to have the Conservatives and Reformists that are already there, the British Conservatives, the Polish Conservatives, the Czech Conservatives and their allies. They're they're, sort of, they're mainstream, but they're definitely anti-Euro-Federalist and opposed to certainly what some of the things the EU is trying to do on economic and monetary union. We're going to have the, the anti-European EFD group, which is already in the Parliament, a Eurosceptic group. They're probably still going to exist in some new form, um, led by UKIP and some of the allies for the UK Independence Party. We're going to have this new Le Pen Wilders group, who I would guess right now is going to have enough seats to form a group. And then we're going to have a block of non-attached MEPs mainly from the radical right, so Jobbik, Golden Dawns. That's four Eurosceptic political forces to the right of the EPP. In addition, we're going to have a larger representation of the radical left in GUI. And this is largely because of Syriza probably coming top in the polls in Greece and winning the most seats in Greece. So as you can see, um, in a sense, a squeezing of the mainstream parties, which will force the EPP and the socialists uh, to work together.